Okay. So this is actually the speaker about, and I think he said a good point, which uh, if you do the MRI too early after surgery, you will see mountains that are not there. And people may say, oh, there is a tear, a re-tear, which is not there. So I think it's a very, very general message to be careful and to wait, not to rush to do the MRI scan. I believe that ultrasound is better than MRI. Yeah, right. Thanks for the question. Another question for our colleagues. So, uh, sorry, it was a bit um, noisy. You asked that if we have a possible retail, uh, we can use ultrasound instead of MR. I, I just commented on what you said that you very important not to do the MRI. Ah, that's that's correct. Yes, because we have too much, too much. Let's say of uh, fluid of granulation tissue. This is not only the case in the shoulder. This is also the case in the knee joint area and the wrist and and the hip. But in general, I think that if we are concerned that this is not really a tear, if we do it very very early after um, the operation, we can do uh, an ultrasound, which is a dynamic examination. It's very helpful. Thank you for the question. Some other question from a... Uh, we have there, on yeah. the right side. Uh, Dr. Gomez mentioned the study by Burkhardt uh, at all, um, about the before the TA degenerative of tears. Uh, in his study, he also performed often the uh, biceps stenotomy. Um, uh, what do you think, Dr. Gomez, about the success of the therapy uh, to repair and the effect of the biceps? Anatomy and degenerative rotator cuff. Microphone for Nuno. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if you, you're uh, referring specifically to the Burkhardt topic that uh, some years ago, yeah. or in general to the fact that you should not, or the role of the anatomy in this kind of thing. Well, Is this? I think I'm part of the Okay. So in general, from, let's say, going from the two, three, four, three, eight, like the... Not to me, uh, times, I would say, in 95% of the... I do something to the body. And in those uh, three, four, um, CAFRA have or may have for repair, not all of them do. Uh, there is a place for do you think the effect of your, uh, of your intervention is more of the first impairment of the pills or the biceps? I would say that I stayed before, so it's hard to answer. But obviously, we do two procedure, procedures in the patient, same situation, do the and do the tenotomy. A, you will have an which work better or profitable to that patient. But definitely the anatomy was useful. You will never know if that that, that patient needs. Okay, thank you. We will proceed with the next question. We have uh, there a question for the floor. floor. Uh, I have a question for Chiara. Uh, before you explain very well how the uh, healing potential of the Transosseral repair is probably bigger than the uh, than the anchor, but on the other hand, you also explained the problem of the cutting of the bone from the lateral side. In case of the osteoporotic bone, do you use some tapes or some augmentation for the lateral part, like buttons or something like that, or you move to the anchors? Absolutely, we don't use. Mr. Atright. Uh, my question to Dr. Gomez. Uh, what are your indications for the speed bridge technique? And because what I think, uh, what are your indications for the speed bridge repair? Yes, because what I feel, if you are using this technique for a medium or large size tear, and we have only one point of contact that is far lateral from the medial footprint, and there is a potential risk of uh, micro movement between the cuff and the humeral head. So it may lead to the uh, non-healing. Uh, what do you think? 
Uh, well, to make it short, so you are asking me in which cases I would choose yeah. to go for yeah. the studio bridge yeah. kind of construct, yeah. right? Uh, I would say it's always an uh, intraoperative uh, decision. Um, if it's a larger tear, I feel safer with a stronger construct, and okay. that is uh, okay. the studio bridge. Uh, so a medial row anchor and uh, then uh, a couple of uh, lateral knotless uh, uh, anchors um, to, to, to finish the construct. But as long, even in larger tears, as long as I have the feeling that uh, it's not over tensioned, I try to reduce the tear. And if I feel, if I have the feeling it reduces properly with no major tension, um, I will uh, use the tension band in, uh, in many cases, yes. Sometimes you can even um, uh, use the two in a way. So you can start the procedure with medial row anchors, pressing them in a regular fashion with, uh, with needles, suture presses with needles, uh, just to make sure you reduce it properly to diminish the tension. And then you can complete the rest of the repair with uh, one or two uh, lateral row anchors in a, in a tension band fashion. So it's, it's always a la carte. No, actually, like uh, speed bridge, like you know, uh, when you consider the speed bridge technique, because if we are using the single uh, lateral row anchor, actually, in that case, like there is a risk of micro movement between the head and the curve. And that is what I feel like. Between the, the tendon and, and the, the humeral head, because we have one point of contact that is oh, yes, far I think, Okay, yeah. I know what yeah. you mean. Yes. So you think what you're saying is that the purpose of this uh, tension band is. Uh, avoiding excessive tension and, yeah. and permit some micro movements. Yeah, okay. that is true, that is true. That's the rationale behind it. Yes. Okay. okay, we have another question there from, uh, uh, yes, Mike. Okay. Uh, thank you everybody for this uh, great presentation. I have a question for Mr. Gomez. I used to uh, repair my calves, uh, most of my calves with uh, tension band techniques uh, also, but uh, Sometimes, uh, as you know, you we have a double layer rupture, and uh, in these cases, the deep layer is uh, usually more retracted than the, the superficial layer. And uh, when you use a double row repair, classical double row repair, uh, you make uh, dependent sutures, and maybe the deep layer is a little bit too, too stressed. Uh, what do you think about the technique? Uh, which is with uh, two independent sutures with uh, the first row uh, using the Sugaya techniques, for example, and the second row with a tension band just to uh, put the superficial layer in the footprint. Well, I agree with you. As I said, it's an a la carte uh, um, uh, choice. One of the videos I, cho I, I showed you uh, showed exactly um, a double layer uh, rupture and uh, in that case the decision was to uh, use a, su uh, a suture bridge so medial row anchors uh, making sure I pass the sutures through the most inferior uh, layer and then uh, fix it um, uh, subacromially and obviously you can combine other kinds of constructs thank you a very last question maybe uh, I would like to ask Dr. Carahan about subscapularis. Uh, I would like to ask about the indication. When you have a retracted subscapularis tear, which we're very lucky, it's not very often, but when you have it, how you decide to go on the medial repair or you decide to go with the augmentation and repair in a more lateral position? Do you have an indication for this? Well, it depends on the chronicity. So to order an uh, allograft, and to do augmentation is a process that the patient has to have money and the patient has to know what's going on. So I have to decide beforehand that is there a possibility that this will go into augmentation. So I inform the, pa the, the patient and order the allograft. So uh, examination, <laughs> chronicity, uh, fatty infiltration, and try to uh, estimate if it's retractable or not. So, it's kind so of if it is retractable and you, you decide to go on the medial side, do you like this or you don't like and you go for Well, well don't forget, if, it's, uh, if you um, force yourself to do uh, just a simple reattachment, you will not have strength. It will just be a tenodesis effect. So if the patient is old, it's not a problem because it will avoid translation. But if the patient is young, 
it's a problem, then go for augmentation. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, we will have to, to close the session. Maybe just one comment from Frank. Are you a single no, row surgeon or double row surgeon? surgeon? To be honest, as I said before, I probably did my last single row reconstruction like two and a half or three years ago. So I really had to prepare for this talk and it was quite interesting for me to see what's going on. Thank you very much. Yeah, personally, because I would like to, I cannot resist to give one sentence about that. Uh, we all know that we are all attracted by technology and new things and between fashion addict and industrial commercial pressure, we always go into the new things. And with double row, we are created a new technique, but we, are we have created new pathology, which is uh, uh, the, the rupture at the junction of the uh, tendons and the muscle. And nobody really studies what is happening when you have rotational forces. You are created sharing forces that are cutting the tendon. Nobody thinks about that for years. So I would finish to say that I really did appreciate your presentation. It's absolutely the thing we have to say now about that. And I would like to say also, as the conclusion of Nuno said, was that we have to know the two, two kind of techniques and to adapt it to each condition. So thank you. I could not resist to, to that. And now I give the microphone to the boss, to Manos. Thanks, Manos. <laughs>